Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Battletech Heavy Metal, uh, where I have combed the star map and I have found for us the system of Villanueva, the planet, the planet of Villanueva. Uh, this planet has all of the factions that we're looking for, Merrick and the Canopians and the Capellans. It's at the appropriate star level. It has some uh, tags that suggest that there will be purchasable stuff here. Like, I think this is where we should go next. I know it's kind of the wrong direction. Um, from Capellan space, but we don't necessarily have to go into Capellan space. We just have to find planets where the Capellans are active. I'm... man, it's gonna be 21 days to fly. I'm thinking we're probably not... <laughs> we're probably not gonna be able to hit all of the reputation breakpoints we'd like to hit. But I think going to Villanueva is a good step in the right direction here. Uh, so I have queued up a whole bunch of mech repairs and changes to mechs. Um, I realized that we had a Goss Rifle in our inventory that had been, had not been assigned anywhere. So uh, I changed up the design of the Marauder, put that uh, rifle on there, put the AC-10++ with the damage on it that we have uh, in there. And then I reworked the boombox a little bit since it's no longer getting its upgraded cannon. I played with some of the other, uh, other heavy mechs a little um the boombox is the one that's going to feel the most different in actual practice, I think. It's going to be, uh... I took the NARC launcher out of it as well and just replaced it with an SRM launcher. I really like the idea of the NARC thing, but we tend to kill enemies so quickly that we're not really getting any time to benefit from it. Uh, in the daily briefing, Sumeri brings up an open hail from a nearby ship. They say their crew has contracted a virulent case of the periphery pox but the local government is preventing them from landing to receive medical care. Well, I can't really do too much about it. We'll give them the medical supplies. I mean, there's no reason not to. Oh, I should have thought about whose space we were in. We don't want to gain points or gain rep with the Free Worlds League. We just lost 100 points. I mean, it's it's unlikely to matter. If we end the game at negative 99 uh, Merrick reputation, I am going to feel real stupid. But that's very, very, very unlikely. So when we actually get to Villanueva, we'll do one more quick look over our scoring uh, stuff. I think we're at full reputation completion points. I think we have five reputations that are at the extreme edges of the bar now. Uh, but there's still points to be earned from, uh, from obviously just continuing to push the other, the other stuff out. Oh hey, it, it finally repopped. Yang calls you to the mech lab, where you find him standing in the shadow of an enormous ferro-aluminum crate. I don't think that the bounty hunter realized what he was giving us, boss. What we've got is one-third of a mothballed assault mech, mostly the guts, so it doesn't look like much to the untrained eye. But what I can tell you is that this mech is strange. I've never seen anything quite like it. Pharaoh raises her hand. And I think I have a lead on the Dobrev. An old colleague of mine contacted me about a group of patients at the hospital she administrates. They were suffering from what appeared to be misjump-induced injuries. I think it's worth investigating. Samiri rubs her temples. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I've got one too. A jump ship operator I used to hang with has been running his mouth about a big job he did for Nutker Bowman. So who do we f who do we prioritize following up? I mean, hold on a second. Misjump-induced injuries. Errors in jump travels are, are termed misjumps, right? So. Misjump-induced injuries doesn't necessarily mean anything, right? Jump ships, we still have... It's, it's like the thing about the Dobrev having a jump drive on it that's wild is that we no longer have the tech to put jump drives on, like, smaller ships, right? But jump ships still exist. We use them all the time. So misjump-induced injuries could just be from a jump ship. This is not, I think, necessarily all that interesting. Sumeria's lead, on the other hand, could just be a, a guy talking trash. But I think it's... I think it's more. You nodded, Sumiri. Okay, Meyer, your lead sounds promising. Follow up on it. For the time being, this is your top priority. Also driving the ship. This is your second priority, because top priority is still driving the ship. Later, she calls you to the bridge. You find her standing by the view screen, a weary half-smile on her face. I found it. Long story, I'd rather not get into it. Whiskey and cigars were involved. But the Dobrev is on Appian. I've marked it on the star map already. We can get going whenever you want. I don't remember where Appian is. 
Uh, let's have a quick look. I mean, we're almost to the place we're going. We should probably just finish. Is that... No, it's, it's going to be a green one, right? Oof. It's extremely in the wrong direction. Well, it is a Canopian and Capellan world, so we could still get some of the reps we're looking for there. It's 27 days travel away from the places we want to be through a bunch of worlds we've already passed through, so we won't even get any points for the travel. I don't know, man. I kind of want to see through the uh, completion of that thing, but also we have we have a score to worry about. Let's finish getting to Villanueva. We're almost there anyway. We will make further decisions after we figure all this stuff out. So, to begin with, is there anything fun at the Villanueva store? Uh, this is a store operated by the Free Worlds League, so we're going to be paying a premium here. Banshee 3M, Griffin 1S, Thunderbolt Thunderbolt 5SS. This is the Thunderbolt we're missing. That's a whole the Thunderbolt we're missing. Okay, that's very exciting. And that's that's the that's the one mech that we like barely have any pieces of too. Uh, if we just purchase this straight up, then all of the mechs we have left, we need three or fewer pieces of, so we could we could get them in a single sight of them on the battlefield. That's very compelling. I think that's probably uh, probably the plan. It is very expensive for a mech that we are a hundred percent for certain not going to ever use. Uh, let's see what the command center. Or let's see what the contracts on the planet look like too. Obviously, if we were to encounter one in the wild, then perhaps we could take three pieces of it and then just buy the one piece in the shop. So we'll run all the contracts here before we make any big purchasing decisions. Also, it's been nice not having to worry about money, and if we want to buy that Mac, we're going to put ourselves in a position to worry about money. So, not a single job offered by any of the people that we need to be offering a job. And these Liren contracts look like they're... Okay, that one's against the Free Worlds League. That's good for us. As is that one. Okay, so we, we don't want to take robbery, because we're trying to push Capellan up. <clears throat> I'm right about that, right? I'm just realizing I'm, I'm never confident in my memory ever. Yeah, we're good. And, like I said, just check this out. So we have not maxed out faction reputation completion. For each faction with whom your reputation is at the maximum or minimum value, you gain a bonus of 10,000 points up to five times. I think our Draconis Combine rep being at 107 instead of 100 due to whatever weird bug happened is actually making them not count for uh, rep completion. It's not checking greater than 99, it's checking is exactly 100. That that sucks a little bit. Okay, uh, Free Worlds League rep. Oh, you know what? If we drop past Hated into Loathed, we won't be able to shop at their stores anymore. So, if we're going to, uh... <clears throat> if we're going to buy this thing, we kind of have to do it now, huh? And then we have to make sure that we make a decent amount of money here, because we got to have enough money to pay our people in four days. Okay, uh, what is the actual... We're at minus 60, the changeover happens at minus 80. We could probably do one of the contracts before having to make the choice. Maximum reputation thirteen. Yeah. So okay, we can't we can't drop down to loathed off of the first job. Well, which one of these are we doing first? This one is a defend base, and this one is a destroy base. I, I guess it doesn't really matter. Do I want highlands or lowlands? I guess let's do this one because this is the one that we'll take higher salvage on in case we stumble into the thing we want, and then on this one we'll just take all money. I'm, th I'm looking at our numbers and thinking, ooh, we're going to be close to not making pay, but I'm also forgetting about the fact that um, we are we are um, sitting on a huge, huge, huge amount of, um, of sellable gear. So that can solve that problem. It's a single point of extra lost rep. This is only going to take us down to negative 67. So actually, we could probably do both of the jobs... Before um, before we have to make the decision. Okay, yeah, well, let's start here. Start here and we'll do this like this. 
I'm pretty annoyed about that, um, about the Draconis Combine rep thing. That's really dumb. We probably will be able to push one more reputation to 100, so it probably won't end up mattering. You know, we'll get we'll get the um, the extra 10,000 that we're looking for, but it's dumb that we even have to worry about it. So, two and a half skulls. We do not have that many mechs that fit into this space, but let's go ahead and, uh, and spin the wheel, shall we? Let's find out what it is exactly that we are building for. I wish it didn't, like, compulsively reload. I, this plugin that I'm using for this is not ideal. I didn't want to write my own OBS plugin, but um, I'm concerned that the one I'm using is crummy. Okay, so, mechs can only shoot on, turn, on the turn when... The, uh, mechs can only shoot on a turn on which they jumped. So, two and a half skulls. Let's figure out a, a uh, combination of mechs that'll work here. Fortunately, a lot of our smaller mechs are very jumpy. Probably going to want the Hatchet Man. Uh, let, let's just like put mechs down and try to figure out what weights we're talking about here. So that's a two skull, Lance. Could we... We can't bring the Thunderbolt because the Thunderbolt don't have jump jets. It won't be able to... It will never be able to shoot. It could punch, I suppose. Uh, but could we bring a 70 if we replace like the 55? That is, in fact, two and a half symbols. If we pull... Let's say the Hatchet Man and go up to a Wolverine. That keeps us at two and a half. If we drop the Wolverine for another 70, that would be too much. So, we probably wouldn't want it to be the Wolverine. We'd want it to be the Griffin. But we can run this while remaining at two and a half. I like it. Let's, let's see. What exactly do we want to do here? Pilot-wise, I mean. Blackjack does have, yes, it has plenty of jump jets. We're all very jumpy. So, do we actually want this to be the hard light? I guess this can be any 70-ton mech. Could it be a 75? Are we allowed to bring the Orion? We are allowed to bring the Orion. Well, then I think we're going to do that so that we can play with the new uh, the new loadout. Back up to three SRM uh, 6 plus pluses and also a UAC-10 that I found in a shop. Uh, hilariously overpowered, way less heat efficient than it used to be, but we can always just not fire the UAC-10. It's gonna, it's gonna function a little bit more like a slightly smaller, faster version of the crab now, where we have to take it easy on the UAC-10. But even on turns where we just fire the missiles, it's still over 200 damage worth of SRMs, so it'll be fine. We probably want... Coolant vent on the Leaper, and also the Boombox. The Blackjack is pretty heat efficient. You're less so? Only jump. We can only fire on turns that we jumped on, so... Who is piloting this Blackjack? It has a UAC-5 and a medium laser. It's not a, actually a great mech, to be perfectly honest with you. This is probably going to be a little bit on the easy side, to be perfect... Uh, a little bit on the easier side mission-wise, so Brass is not super high-statted, but she could come in and give us another coolant vent, and then we probably, the person uh, flying the blackjack probably just doesn't need it. And it might actually be uncrackable, so that we could have breaching shot on the on the UAC. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Do we, do we want to have bulwark, or do we want to have sensors? Actually, we probably want the sensors more. This thing's going to be operating at a distance, hopefully, where the bulwark is less meaningful. Okay. We are very good <clears throat> at jump shotting our opponents. I will say, I do think it's a little strange that um, most games have ranged combat difficulty modifiers for movement by the shooter. It's a little weird that Battletech doesn't, right? Like, no matter how fast you move on your turn, you still maintain the same accuracy. You would kind of expect jumping through the air to impact your ability to shoot stuff, not just your ability to be shot. I guess the idea is that because the because the big robot is in control of all of the movements, it can just adjust its aim, just do the math and adjust aim to counteract what it's doing with the jets, but it is it's just a little strange is all. So what are we even doing here? Consortium of Liren Manufacturers has been losing ground to American competitor. Just go over there and murder them. Okay, sure. 
Mercenary work, right? Business as usual. I do want to pursue that flashpoint. Given that our it, it looks like our score may... It, it may be the case that we can't get a very high score, we might prioritize finishing the flashpoint. Uh, campaign over scoring well. Alright, destroy several manufacturing facilities. Beware of security forces, blow up buildings. Easy. Never heard anything easier. Moving to position. God, that thing is so fast. Moving to position. Got it. I'm really excited to uh, to see what the Orion is going to do to mechs at this size. Like the Orion is nearly the most damaging mech we have. The Annihilator and the Crab are both capable of larger alpha strikes, but the Annihilator and the Crab are both running some very unfair toys. Hatchetman 3x. So it's not impossible for us to see mediums here. Uh, remember, we still need one piece of a Cicada 3C, and we need uh, three pieces of a Shadowhawk 2D. Which is a kind of Shadowhawk that seems to maybe not even really exist in the real world. Uh, so you gotta jump in if you want to get to shoot. Yeah, let's see what's over there. What is that guy? Got an Enforcer, Vindicator, and something at 50. The Hatchet Man's dangerous, but he also moved already. So that's a PPC. The Enforcer is definitely pretty dangerous. The large laser and the AC-10. I think I'm inclined to focus... He's got 720 armor. They're pretty similar in terms of actual toughness. And I'm assuming his large laser and his AC-10 are on opposite sides of the mech to prevent the thing I'm about to do here from, from actually working. We could just go to the middle. It's not really got all that much health. Oh, never mind. I'm not doing a precision strike. Well, I guess I could do a precision strike on the Vindicator. I definitely wouldn't do it here with us only able to hit him with one weapon. Or maybe we just cut the hatchet man in half and endure... I'm actually really um, worried about my decision making here. Jumping this guy out in front of everybody is maybe not the smartest move. Okay, excellent clustering. That guy is real weak. Okay. I appreciate them moving the Enforcer first, because now we have a chance to kill the Vindicator before it could get a turn. Is that at all feasible? We jump you to here... You do get to apply all of the weapons. And if, if not him, then it's the blackjack. No, the, the griffin definitely does better damage than the blackjack. We don't get to aim here, but we might just get lucky because it does only take one weapon connection. Well, actually, no, sorry, two, because he has uh, he has garnered up. Oh, I saw one orange number. Exactly one. We fired 14 projectiles, and one of them hit the location that is most likely to be hit. Well, now it's really, really the case that one projectile, or one one weapon strike will do the job. Of course, I'd love to get more than one weapon shot off here, but I think we can't. Yeah, I mean, like, this is definitely the closest. Well, shoot. Alright, here's hoping we get lucky. Here we go. Oh, yeah, the second projectile went dead center. And then the boombox gets to just cut somebody in half. I mean, it's going to be this guy, right? Very unlikely. I guess the hatchet man is probably actually a bigger threat, because he's close and he has that hatchet, you know? Aw, he didn't quite get there. That's a shame. There's a lot of damage, though. Actually... Is that a hundred center torso armor? The Hatchet Man 3X is pretty heavily armored for a mech of its size. Okay, so because they have turrets, they're going to regret that. Because they have turrets, they uh, don't get to go first, which means we get to have another chance at finishing this guy off, which I bet we can pull off. We're at 54, so killing him now gives me the ability to precision strike again if I want to, so let's just make sure it happens. Wow, that was some bad clustering. It ended up not mattering, but... Grass needs more time in the simulator.
So the Centurion is, I suppose, dangerous. It's also lighter armored. And precision striking it will will let us hit it twice before it gets a turn, so I think that's gonna be the play here. Let's let's jump way, way out to the side. We got pretty lucky that we generated a map with so much water. Okay, broke one of his lasers. That's something. Good to go. And that must have left him pretty weakened. Oh yeah, 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 that's beautiful. Can I get close enough to give him the small lasers? I can. I'm going to do it from right here so that hopefully I'm not in direct line of fire of the turrets. And the blackjack's not that lightly armored, but it does make me nervous. It's very, it has very light structure, which is another oh, thing you do have to worry about in a situation like this. Wow, not a single one of your projectiles hit center. That's incredible. Well, I don't know that it really matters. I guess we should shoot at the guy who's already injured. This is definitely going to be too much, though. I'll uh, I'll turn off the UAC-10 for this. I'm reasonably sure that we only got that kill because we destroyed his right torso and there was enough rollover damage from the torso destruction to do two more to the center torso. Ridiculous. Let's get this done. Okay, so all we have to do is pull off a kill on this guy that breaks, uh, in order to break their line of sight. I guess we do know, I should probably jump forward then, because we do know they have sensor lock, right? Let's get you way the hell up here. What are we looking at? Standard LRM 30, 157 health. I think I would rather kill this guy first. I don't know that we're necessarily going to be able to do that. So he's actually fairly heavily armored, but we can we can start. Ooh. That was actually excellent clustering. I guess brass is motivated by negative reinforcement. The sort of thing you don't ever want to teach somebody <laughs> that you are motivated by negative reinforcement. Uh, I need to jump slightly further forward. Is that going to be enough? 42 four times? Yeah, every every weapon has to hit, but it would be enough. Firing jump jet. Targeting for an alpha strike. Okay, cool. Turret destroyed. Obviously, they still have long-range turrets. They will still be able to get the job done here. Uh, we may as well jump forward. There's no reason not to, because we're just going to sensor lock anyway. Actually, am I? Or do I want to leave... Well, Cruz doesn't have sensor lock. Never mind. I was going to say maybe we reserve tire fire down so we can UAC-5 a turret, but that's not actually going to work. Uh, the UAC-10 has pretty decent range. I've got a sensor lock. We might be able to make that happen. What can I do for you? Nope, looks like we cannot. Well, Ready, that's set. fine. I don't know that I want to shoot at all, then. I think I'm just going to brace. Because I don't actually care about destroying the buildings, right? Show them what you've got. Interesting. Maybe we destroyed the only turret that had sensor lock. Okay, this gets us vision of all of the turrets. Does commit us to destroying them all this turn. That seems pretty important. So standard shredders do pack an AC-20, and destroying them will be a very high priority. Copy that. that sucks. Yes, Commander. Do we, we have... Okay, we do have split shot on the blackjack, at least. So can we get into a position where I have medium laser range? Yeah. Uh-huh. All right, we're going to go both the medium lasers on this guy, just in case of a, a dumb miss again. But we'll swap the UAC over to this other one and get started on him. I've got enough gun for everyone. Oh, tire fire, how I wish that were true. 
Okay, only 67 health left. Commander. Easy enough. Let's, um... Hold on. Reserve down. Waiting for my opening. Can Cruz get close enough to benefit from her... No, there's no way she can, right? Alright, I guess we're just gonna fire the UAC-10. I was gonna say, to benefit from her multi-shot. Spreading out some damage to the other turret. That's fine. That works. I bet we're going to get a hidden objective plus 10% pay bonus on our 60,000 credits. Or, sorry, C-bills. Which is totally a different thing, you guys. Man, SRM pods are very, very good. Good to go. Alright, at this point I feel like they could just give it to me. There's no way we're going to screw this up, right? I'm not going to fail to destroy the buildings. Yeah, man, this was, this was made so, so much easier by the, uh, the presence of all this water. Also, I don't know how he managed to do that. I mean, he just missed that building completely. It would seem to be a pretty difficult thing to do, given that it's stationary and everything. I guess in some ways that means Foxglove is you, pretty impressive. He managed to pull off a thing that nobody expected him to be able to do there. Uh, so this has 24 health left, and you couldn't kill that anyway. Well, what if I, if I jump way up? The high road. So I'm going to give the UAC to this thing. Again, just putting two projectiles on it to try to try to make sure it goes down no matter what. You get a headshot and you get a headshot. And we did manage to miss one. I feel like we missed way more than 1 in 20 of our uh, 95% shots. That's probably just uh -huh. confirmation bias nonsense, but it sure feels like Here the case. Okay, I guess no reinforcements. That makes sense. A two and a half skull uh, mission does not have a very high enemy budget. And that lance we saw there was like, okay. The initial defensive lance plus the turrets. Yep, we did in fact get a 10% bonus. Really, destroy defending forces was a bonus objective. I guess technically you could get that done without destroying the enemy uh, force. Technically. So we didn't get anything of value there. Uh, yeah, nothing at all. Uh, vindicator part and uh, I guess just the parts for the mechs we have parts for already? We ended up getting to take home a pretty large percentage of the overall loot pool on that. These lower, these lower skull missions often have smaller loot pools because you are... Often fighting fewer enemies, and each enemy that you have contains fewer components. Also, I need to maybe get a new chair. This thing is creaking. Every time I shift this, it is creaking and groaning like I'm killing it. Alright, let's see about that other mission. So it was this one. I sort of want to take more cash here. I guess, actually, we get... Three points of priority salvage uh, at 553 Seabills coming in, or 553k. We could pull this down and get two more rep out of it. Currently, we're going to take you from negative 67 to negative 73. I guess that's probably... It probably doesn't change anything to do negative six here instead of negative eight. And we may actually need the money. I'm going to take it like this. And let's find out how else we are going to take it. Oops, I managed to minimize battle tech there. Listen, computers are hard. All right, what do we got? Big Wheel. Big Wheel says, take it easy, SB. Why don't you just... Why don't you just have a day off? Why don't you relax? 
Thank you, Big Wheel. I really appreciate that. So we just got to do a two and a half skull. You know what? We're just going to roll out there with the same group. Uh, if we can get this mission to go down as quickly as we got the last one to go down, we can absolutely figure out a new destination, fly out, and jam another mission or two into this episode. At this point, you know, the Disciples of the Wheel is like a well-oiled machine. We've done a lot of work together. We've blown up so, so, so many enemies. We hardly even need to communicate anymore, which is why we always disable the radio in Steam Fitter's Mac. These guys have a secret listening post here on Villanueva, and we've just learned that Merrick agents have discovered its location. We need time to transmit all the data. Uh, they're advancing on the facility. We're detecting an engine signature from an assault class mech, closing on the base's location. Well, you know, I suppose it is technically possible it could be a Highlander 733. We might come out of this with a uh, with one of the mechs we need yet. Command interface initiated. All right, picking up that assault mech they said would be here. No, I'm. Oh wait, there it is. Shit, that's big. You know, at this point in the campaign, we're not really that impressed by Assault Max anymore. Uh, so yeah, no rules. We just kind of do whatever we want. Um, what do we want? Well, we definitely want the boombox to be out in front a little bit more. I'm a little reluctant to expose this guy too much. You should probably be close to the enemies, though. And the blackjack also doesn't really need to be close. Like, it's nice to use those medium lasers, but the UAC is a huge percentage of our uh, intent here. Okay, that's a Jenner. For a second there, I got excited because it's kind of the same shape as a cicada. That thing is going to run up and just fire on a building, isn't it? Oh no, it didn't fire at all. Interesting color scheme on these mechs. Uh, I think it is quite ugly. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like that weird kind of teal with that brown at all. Yes, Commander. Okay, let's blow some stuff up. So, we have a lot of evasion on these enemies, but they're small and we can punch them and try to generate enough. Uh, oh yeah, look at that. Their pilots are unskilled too. They don't really know how to keep them steady. So, we'll run over here and we'll throw a punch try to knock this thing off balance. Can I hit the Jenner? I cannot. Well, let's just do this then. Alright, that will definitely unstable him and make him lose all of his evasion. Easily killing him. Yep, and here comes all this noise. Okay, at least these buildings are reinforced. You're a 60 ton, and then there's... Somewhere around here, there's going to be an assault mech as well. The assault mech is in a second lance, it looks like. So, good to know. What can I do for you? Uh, we're definitely not going to be able to punch the other one. Well, what, we, what we can do is move in close enough. Ah, uh, no, in fact, we cannot. I was going to say move in close enough to hit it with the support weaponry, which is not impressed by its evasion. Well, then we are probably going to want to... Here, we'll have you run forward. We'll shoot a UAC and a medium laser at that guy and multi-target one of the other medium lasers over at the Jenner just to strip one evasion. Hey, not bad. And actually, that shot totally landed. Commander. And then you are... I guess gonna jump in. You're probably not actually gonna hit, and you're gonna generate a ton of heat doing this, but... Mostly what we're trying to do is soften this thing up for the, um, for the Orion. Actually, we hit considerably above expected value there, I think. Well, not considerably. I guess it was... It looked like three of our four weapons hit. And we were at 60-65% on all of the shots, so actually it's totally totally fine and reasonable. Uh, I think I'm more interested in finishing off the Jenner uh -huh. than I am in killing the Quick Draw, and I also think I'm going to try to do it without aiming and without using the UAC. It's a good idea to bank all this resolve over for next turn. Did you see that? Did you see it? Give them everything you've got. Okay. We 
Waiting for orders. Blackjack, not a big deal. So it would probably be good to hit this guy with a precision strike at some point just to push his initiative down. Let's have that be a job for yes, Commander. the Blackjack. Mech where we like lose the least by going after him. Also, man, I cannot get support weapon range on anybody. Just, I'm playing a little bit too far back. Well, you know what? If all you're really doing Ready, is set. slowing a dude down, it doesn't have to be the greatest shot in the world. Actually, should I take his leg? SRM4 is on this side. You know, the torso's fine. Wow, actually, really good work. Yeah, critical hit. Good to go. Tiger Fire is a super good shot. I guess I shouldn't be so surprised. Uh, I don't think I want to jump all that distance because we don't need to in order to fire. And the further you oh, jump, fire. the more heat you generate with the jump. So I'm going to keep our resolve high. And we're just going to give the Blackjack one blast so that he knows that he's fighting us and not the buildings. Obviously, we should get the extra money for uh, keeping all of the buildings alive Commander. if we can and then i think maybe you do in fact just run up and do this just drill right into the side it might be the case in fact it probably is that we just want to hit the precision strike now right rather than saving it for the orion because we can kill this guy off and then the orion gets to shoot at a dude who only has one evasion anyway here, we will go ahead and turn the UAC back on. This is a hell of a lot of damage for a mech of this size. And I guess we could precision strike this too, but I'm not worried. Yeah, he, is, he has been reduced to basically zero threat. I'm assuming from a different direction, probably, because that's usually how this goes. Do we actually, we don't have any sensor readings on them, so we don't know where they are, but you have to assume they're going to be, like, back there, right? So I'm just going to do a full sprint on it. over to this side of the base. we gotta, we got to get our sensors pushed out. Yes, Commander. And you can probably finish this guy off so the Orion can turn around. Roll to that. I think we can just go for the precision strike on this one. Firing a full Here ya. Vanguard handled. Got it. Waiting on you, Commander. Uh, yeah, probably just go around the same side. Sprinting. I considered running over here because it's possible the enemy's approaching from that side, but I guess it's really not because we can see the edge of the map over there. Okay, we do have a reading on that assault mech. It is a 90. 90 is not Highlander, right? I don't actually know. I kind of want to just reserve down. Well, if we do that, we might lose a building, though. I don't really want to run Batrock out in front of an enemy of this size. But I guess we need to get vision of him. Let's get my 5 evasion and my bulwark and make sure we're pushing a side toward him. It is a Cyclops 10Q with 75% armor. Doesn't the Cyclops, yes, yes it does, have an ammo bin in its center torso. Well, I guess let's work on that. Then again, should we be trying to take this guy home in one piece? Because if we're going to take three pieces of... Or home, you know, intact-ish. Because if we're taking three pieces of something home, um, a 90-ton mech that we might be able to sell an extra copy of is probably the smart way to do that. Firing all weapons. Okay, one headshot. That's pretty good. So we should be able to kill him with a headshot from almost any weapon now, right? 42 damage is... Oh yeah, he only had 75% armor to start with. Uh, that said, you definitely cannot contribute. You know what, I might... Do I want to sprint or do I want to sensor lock him? Oh, never mind. If I don't sprint, he's well outside of sensor range. Waiting for orders. So Blackjack should... Definitely also generate a lot of evasion, because this is a dangerous enemy. But we may just kill him here. Get a little bit lucky. Time to die. Okay, we did, in fact, get a little bit lucky. And stay down. 
Is that the whole last lance? Yes, it is. Okay. Well, an assault mech is a lot less dangerous if it comes in all by itself like that. That was uh, maybe not optimal play from our <laughs> from our opponents. So with that being the case, where are we at on Cyclops 10Q, I wonder? Is this going to be enough to finish another one? It, oh, just barely is not. Oh well. Maybe we'll get lucky and get one more piece somewhere. Let's make sure there's nothing else here that we might care about. Targeting systems or anything. Nope, okay. Wow, we really did not get anything other than that Cyclops. I guess there just wasn't anything else in the pool, right? We could have pulled one more piece of salvage, I guess. but Or one more piece of um, chassis salvage, but it's fine. We're unlikely to finish any of the, uh, another copy of any of those mechs anyway. So this is not a great situation for us. We're going to buy that whole Thunderbolt. That is, that is happening for sure. Uh, let me just double check here. Thunderbolt 5 SS, 1 of 5. And we're going to double double check, which is sometimes known as a triple check. Uh, to make sure that we do in fact have... So the one we have out is an SE. And then in storage, we also have, a, have an S. Is that right? 65s. Uh... Thunderbolt 5 SS 1 of 5, Thunderbolt 5 S quantity 1. Yes, so the Thunderbolt 5 SS is the one we need. Let's go spend almost all of the money we've accumulated over the entirety of the game. I mean, this is what we were accumulating it for, so I guess I can't be too upset about it. And this is a 10,000 point mech right here. This completes this class. New battle max available. Alright, let's go ahead and throw that gar garbage in storage. Actually, what's it? Slowdown is very energy weapon heavy. Yeah, I don't need that. Okay, we have just enough to pay our people. So we should probably sell some things before we go, I guess. Uh, we have some extra, yeah, we have some, like, just spare bodies that we could sell off to make up the difference quickly. Instead of having to, like, I don't want to have to page through all of our medium lasers and stuff. But we can, we can sell off two bodies. Two big extra assault class max, and that's good enough. So I'm right about that. We are now on, yes, 20,000 of our 40,000 for mech class completion. This is a big gain. All right, let's, um, let's figure out what our next location is. Where are we flying to next? Do we want to just go for that Flashpoint campaign? You know, honestly, probably. I do want to see the end of this. Oh, this is a 30-day travel. You know, I, our score's gonna be fine. Um, hold on a second. What did I... Our previous score, last time we did a campaign mode, our score was 614,542. I was hoping that we could find a way to compete with that while still doing a bunch of extra stuff outside of, uh, outside of necessity. But it looks like we're not gonna be that far off. We're going to be north of 500k certainly, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just let's just go ahead and fly over. I'm a little bummed out about like this world being poor and not having like this we're not going to be able to find a lot of valuable um things to buy in this store probably. Yeah, let's go. Well, hold on. Before we go ahead and go, do we need to do any repairs? I think everything's still in good condition, right? Yeah, everything's fine. Okay, let's do it. Let's hit it. It is a shame that it is on such a uh, such a low skull world. I do think it's it's an interesting decision for them to make it so that the skull level of the flashpoint has nothing to do with the skull level of the world. I guess, in a sense, that's just about uh, making things easier on them. Like that way, they can decide where they want the flashpoints to be by uh, density of missions that are already, you know, flashpoint style missions that are already in that area, rather than having to find a planet somewhere that is the right skull level for the thing they want to insert in the world. We are not nearly broke. We are absolutely fine, Darius. Calm down. So we should be pretty close to. Actually, I bet we are. I bet all of our pilots are at or above the experience threshold for the training pods. 
So we're probably not getting... Oh, you know, we have 233 days left. That might not actually be true. But we should be close to being capped out on um, point gains from having all these pilots. We'll still be getting XP on pilots for uh, missions, even when you're all the way maxed out. Uh, or even yeah, even when you're at 10 skill points in each category, you still gain experience, so we're still getting points on all those pilots. Uh, Darius opens the morning briefing with a scowl on his face. Uh, we picked up new supplies a few weeks ago, and we're just now opening some of the tr uh, crates of machine tools. And, well, I can't believe this has happened again, but Yang practically explodes from his chair. We have more frozen Triple F burger meat. Do you know how hard this stuff is to come by in the periphery? Dr. Murad sighs audibly. Please tell me the refrigeration was still operational. I don't want a repeat of last time. Oh, don't worry, Doc. My team will take care of the goods. Yang flashes you a winning smile. What do you say, Commander? Burgers on the menu? You know what? We have our own plant... What's a Triple F, a triple F burger? Triple F restaurants. Boy, it sure sounds like it's bad meat, right? Grade Triple F. Let's just use the hydroponics. We'll make our own burgers. I don't trust crates that have been on the ship for weeks. An idea pops into your head. Uh, Chief, you're kind of an expert on Triple F burgers. You think the hydroponics garden has what you need to recreate the real thing? Yang's face takes on the stony expression that you've come to ex associate with complicated refit orders. Hmm, from what I've heard, the stuff is basically whale meat, so I'll have to improvise. But, yeah, challenge accepted. By the end of the week, Yang and his mech techs have raided the garden and retrofitted a blast furnace into a makeshift grill. Somebody even decorated the mess hall in Triple F's trademark colors. While only those who've traveled in Davian space can attest to the accuracy of the burgers, everyone agrees that they are delicious. Well, I guess that's good. I guess, being out in space, just completely separated from all of society for a month or two at a time, would probably make you pretty desperate for any trappings of civilization at all, even if they're just what sounds like fast food burgers. Also, look, I'm not going to be... I'm, I'm not one of these snobs who's like, oh, fast food is bad food for the poors. I mean, first of all, I am the poors, so uh, that would be a little hypocritical. And secondly, I actually think I think some fast food's like legitimately very good. That might just, that might be poor person tongue. <laughs> that might be because I have never eaten in a fancy restaurant or anything, but, uh, well, you know, varying degrees of fancy. But like, I think a burger from Wendy's actually tastes... Very, very good. <laughs> My guess is Triple F is not Wendy's. My bet is Triple F. If we were to see some images of Triple F, we'd be like, oh, that's Space McDonald's. Because if you're only going to have one huge burger chain, of course, it's a parody of McDonald's, right? Their burgers are fine. You know what? You, this is what you could say about McDonald's. They're, all of their food is chemically designed to always taste exactly the way it's supposed to taste. You buy some food at McDonald's, it's going to be exactly the same as the last food you bought at McDonald's. That's a comfort, you know, in ways. Alright, we are 50 minutes into the episode and maybe should not begin a new mission here, but we're going to push it. We're going to do one. So, no consecutive deployments, engagement length short. This might be another one-off, actually. Our intel was right, Commander. Surface scans show that the Dobrev is moored at a makeshift spaceport near Appian's southern pole. We can take it, but we'll need to move fast. You know, we're pretty good at move fast. Okay, Commander. I've performed a sensor sweep of the planet's surface to confirm what we talked about earlier, and everything checks out. The Dobrev is moored at a spaceport about 200 clicks beneath our feet. Nice. Remind me to send that pal of yours a case of Timbiki Dark. Which, I mean, beer, right? It's the beer of the Inner Sphere. Apparently there's only one. I wouldn't know where to find him, Yang. Guy's on the run. It turns out he's been running his mouth to lots of people. And the Frontier's criminal underground really, really hates a snitch. Yeah, that makes sense. Too bad for him, but we got the intel we needed. I'm counting this as a win for us. That might be premature. Well, don't start celebrating just yet, Commander. There's a snag. We can't move on the spaceport. At least, not directly. The whole complex is surrounded by turrets. Besides, the moment the Dubrev's replacement crew catches wind of us, they're going to try to run. And injure, injure themselves terribly when they attempt a KF jump. Maybe even destroy the ship. 
You know, I don't get the feeling that Notker Bauman gives two, ship, uh, two shits about his hired help, XO. The Bauman group has jumped the Dobrev before, and if we back these people into a corner, they will absolutely do it again. And that is almost certainly true. We've all dealt with Notker Bauman. We know what the man is like. He wouldn't hesitate to maim his own employees if he felt that he could profit from it. Thankfully, I believe that we, the, the, Motor, uh, the Motorbjorn and I, have found a solution. Just a moment, I'll put it on the view screen. I totally forgot about the Motorbjorn. What you're seeing is a security post about 20 clicks north of the spaceport. If we capture this site, we can bring, uh, we can bring down the turrets and remotely engage the spaceport's docking clamps. Two birds, one stone. And with the clamps engaged, the Dobrev won't be going anywhere. Even the Bowman group, even the Bowman group wouldn't try jumping a ship that's locked down to the tarmac. Okay, that's the play then. We hit the complex, transfer control of its computers to the Motorbjorn, and then move on the spaceport. You know what we're doing, people. Let's get it done. Again, feels like a dialogue that maybe had three too many lines in it, because we kind of got the idea. They do love to, to state and restate and restate things. Or just, like, divide a, a thing that should be one line into three lines that are spoken by three different people. Okay, the good news is there are missions here on this planet from the, uh, from the Capellan Confederation. This one's against the Magistracy. That's also good. Uh, we absolutely will not be working for the Magistracy. I was kind of hoping we, were, we would have some that were for Capellan anti-Canopian, because that would be, that would be double dipping. But nope, it looks like the planetary government is on the other side of is on one side or the other of every single one of these. Well, that's a shame. Think of all the efficiency we're missing. Anyway, hourglass, three and a half skulls. Let's do it. Drop you right on top of a Bowman Group security outpost. You're gonna have to capture the site and clear out its defenses. E easy, 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 easy. Let's uh, go ahead and ask the wheel how we shall complete this highly successful episode. Wheel says that we shall, you know, it loves it when we grind them beneath our heels. That's very inconvenient. That's one of the ones that is most inconvenient. Okay, three and a half skulls. We get to we get to juice this up a little bit. Uh, let's start by pulling the blackjack. That's definitely a thing we don't want to bring. And do we want to go for like maybe one of the cataphracts or? Oh no, we we bring the dragonfly. Of course we do. It's a desert biome, and we need to we need to jump on people. That's a no brainer. And then, I mean, we might bring the penance mech if we're going if we're doing the heat thing in a desert, and we already have the dragonfly out. The penance mech makes a lot of sense as a uh, as a support unit. Uh, if I pull Batrock and throw in the warhammer, that does take us to three and a half. And then we could we could trade out the griffin for the penance mech. I mean, that totally works, right? And then maybe we keep these same pilots. Foxglove is a great pilot for the hard light. Uh, Brass will be fine in the Pendant's mech. Cruise is... With the, with the Orion's new loadout, I do like Cruise in it. Although, there's certainly something to be said for um, breaching shot on a UAC-10. And then the Dragonfly definitely wants to be super mobile and, like... Steamfitter is such a good pilot for like he's he fits so well. I guess the other thing we could do is we could bring Tiger Tail, but Steamfitter has that um, that extra three points of hit defense. Yeah, but we want to get that on Tiger Tail. I'm gonna bring Tiger Tail. He's just like maximum outfitted for uh, for survivability. Okay, grind them beneath our heels. We must bring down a bring down a great big foot with each mech at some point during this. That's. Probably going to be fine. The other missions on this world are so easy that I don't think we have to worry too much about damage that we do to the legs of the Warhammer. Because we could just not use the Warhammer on the rest of these. And these are low enough difficulty that I'll probably grind the rest of this planet out off camera. Because it's not, it's not going to be terribly fun to watch. I don't want it to seem like I am trying to just burn through the rest of the, uh, the, the career mode here or anything. Um, but... At this point, we've seen every configuration of this company do almost everything off of the Blood Wheel many times, and, you know, it's just... 
there are it was pointed out in the comments um last episode or maybe a couple episodes ago that there actually are a couple of things on the wheel that we haven't seen yet some of the stuff that i added uh, when i when i put in the other half of the wheel restrictions i will make sure to get those on camera um before the series ends if we don't encounter them naturally okay commander the defenses will probably run on the heavy side just get in there and blow stuff up we do need to take the facility so the motor bureau can lock down the docking clamps yeah so leave it kind of in her kind of in a hurry go fast go aggressive i mean we hardly even need to be told that we don't really have another mode Move auto receive. i feel like i'm using lrms way less this career mode than we did in the last career mode this has been a very uh it's been a very aggressive company Again, the, the snub PPCs are a significant part of that. You betcha. All right, so we've got ourselves an Enforcer 4R. Uh, we are zero money, full salvage on this. So if we were to run into a mech that we need um, we need parts from, we are able to get parts from it. Uh, so... That time there's a 55... I think we probably just reserve. I don't really want to start with the Pendant Smack. Let's let them all take shots at us while we have our massive amounts of evasion. Although, obviously, um, there's some danger of stray shots going on here without us having moved at all. Okay, we got very lucky. That could not have gone better. Standing by. And now we must crush. Let's crush some dudes. kind of think I want to jump in with the Warhammer because we can... Um, we can hit with the support weapons if I do. Although, maybe that's a bad idea because we don't actually want to kill enemies, right? If I don't jump, I don't get cover, though. Okay. So what do we have over here? It is a party mech. Okay, party mech's pretty easy to control with heat stuff. And the griffin's not a big threat, so I think we are, in fact, going to just absolutely crush this enforcer. Let's open the battle by completely deleting one of the enemies. <laughs> so he's got only 195 center torso health. We definitely don't have to go this hot. Let's... Honestly, the PPCs are probably enough. But let's leave on all the small lasers, too. I know I'm... I'm it's not generating all that much extra heat, and just in case stuff doesn't cluster well or we get really below average luck there... I want to be absolutely sure we get the job done. Okay, now. Now it is the time to start thinking about... Can we inferno that guy? No. Now it is the time to start thinking about putting, uh, putting the heels in. Let's have some of these mechs just close in. I mean, that griffin's not going to punch me. Yes, Commander. Uh, yeah, yeah, griffin. And if it did, like, who cares? Boombox... I might just try to blow up the party mech right now. Oh, I guess I only have one weapon that can actually hit it. Uh, in that case, since I only get eight shots with the UAC-10, maybe I don't fire at it at all. Maybe I do actually just sprint forward. Going turbo. We just gotta get close enough to, to deal the blows we need to deal. And we know there are enemy turrets. So I'm not too happy about that. Apparently we are not close enough for the enemy turrets to be part of the battle. I mean, they said defenses. I guess, do we know there are turrets? They said defenses will run on the heavy side, but that might not actually be the same thing. I think what we're going to do here is reserve down. I know this is a little bit dangerous, but if we reserve down now, then anybody that we knock down is going to stay down for an entire round. Wow, that's remarkable. That number of uh, that number of shots and no no joy at all. And the Griffin totally did run up and punch us. Well, to be clear, I didn't think that he wouldn't do it. I just thought that if he does do, if he did do it, it wouldn't matter. And I think I was right about that. So we're going to have the hard light. Yes, Commander. No, it's not going to be the hard light. It's going to be the Orion. We're going to have the Orion just shoot the leg off of this uh off of this griffin i think 
and then everybody else can gather around and stomp the crap out of it. What I like a lot about this plan is it means we can use the we can have the Warhammer not um, not jump and break its legs. So let's go to that leg. You have twenty percent damage reduction over a hundred and twenty uh, one hundred and thirty two health. So we probably don't need the UAC. We're on the risk of killing it too quickly if we hit it with the UAC. Wow, really terrible aim. Like, so little of that went to the leg. Yes, Commander. I think that was quite a bit below expected value. Um, which complicates everybody's turn, so great, Bye. thanks for that. Uh, I'm going to have the Dragonfly jump on it now, I guess? The value of doing that- oh, wow, the, it really wants to go somewhere. The value of doing that now... Is that we will still everybody else will still get the thing. We'll just we'll do enough damage from the impact to knock it over. Okay, we managed to land on his arm, which is ideal. That minimizes the damage that he took from the initial impact. Good to go. Now the danger with having hard light step on him in this situation is that it'll it will be leaving its back open to the uh, to the quick draw over there, or the uh, the party mech rather, which is risky. Copy that. Let's get this. So that's two stomps established. And then the question is, do I do that? What does the back armor on this thing look like? I mean, we have a lot of back structure. And the hunchback won't be able to fire all of its weapons without overheating, probably, because it generated more than half of its. Oof, it's risky though. Maybe I shouldn't do this. It's too risky? Yeah, it's probably too risky. We'll have to we'll have to wait on that. Uh let's have instead have the hard light step over here and just try to kill the party mech. And then this guy acts on initiative two, so he'll get up before we get a... Well, you know, the Enforcer will act, and then we'll get to go first on, on initiative two, so the hard light could still get a stomp off, Moving to but in a much safer uh, position. And I'll go ahead and cool and fed for this. I, I definitely want to fire the full thing. I should probably have moved even closer and gotten all the small lasers, too. Lock on target. Wow, that just went so much, like... Time. First of all, a ton of it to the arm, and secondly, a bunch of it just not even uh, into the enemy at all. So a remarkable amount of missing. They've blown past my arm. Orders? You already got your stomp off. Let's have you overheat this guy. We'll just turn this guy off instead of dealing with his nonsense. Yeah, and we don't want a precision strike, because if we precision strike, he won't go during phase three, the enemy will go first during phase two, and they'll have their guy stand up. So yeah, we'll just do it like this. Okay, much better shooting from the pendant's back. So now he takes his turn immediately. Battle mech power up detected. Receiving you. Okay, we get to go first. We get to stomp. Actually, I get to, because I have to move to throw the stomp in, I even get to pick an angle. There's a reasonable chance here of killing this guy with the four small lasers afterward. Okay, he's not dead, but he's he's real close. One more shot to the center torso would have been lethal there. Really? What an interesting decision. Ready. Uh, so... The two people who still... Or no, the only person who still needs to get their stomp is the Orion, then. And the Orion doesn't have full leg armor. So you take 95 to each leg when you stomp. So I guess we could probably... We could... There's a pretty good chance we could kill this guy. 
by jumping on him. And just get it out of the way. No sweat. Provided we don't miss, I guess. Okay, yeah. Enemy down. Take five damage to the structure of that leg, which is pretty good, provided, of course, that we uh, manage to not take any further damage to that leg. We jump all the way in and we just give this guy the whole everything. Roger that. I guess we didn't need to hit the flamethrowers because it was pretty likely that we were going to get the kill there, but I thought I'd be on the safe side. Oh, embarrassing for you. Really just horrible work. Okay, I guess I guess you did connect with one of your weapons at least. This guy's like mega dead, right? Oh, apparently that was just close enough to trigger the next thing. Okay. Didn't quite shut him off, but he's like, he's super dead, and we have already accomplished our goal. Receiving you. I see no reason not to just throw lots of punches here. Right? Why generate any more heat than we absolutely have to? He lost almost all of his weapon systems there. Commander? Coordinates received. Okay, so, given what Darius just said, but also common sense, we're going to see another Lance, right? There's basically, there was never any chance that that was going to be the whole enemy team. Firing jump jet. Not on a mission with the skull rating that we're seeing here. Oof, it is really hard to get off of this hill. Can you, yeah, just jump right down. We need to get to the water. On the move. Well, I'm not you so much. In fact, you know what you need to do? You need to take a moment and just completely clear your uh, stability damage. Heads up, Commander. You've got hostile contacts inbound. Okay, something big. 85 ton. I think 85 is the size of the Highlanders, so that could be the thing we're looking for. I think what I'm going to do is move to the edge of here instead of into the water, and we're going to sensor lock that guy. Okay, that's a big lance coming in. Alright, the Battlemaster is not, in fact, the thing that we need. Commander. We Good to go. don't have any reasonable ability to knock its head off, right? Yeah, not really. But we could, we could take a swing and just try to get lucky here. What are the odds that we hit both of the projectiles from this directly into his big face? Wow. Oh, you know what? That might not actually have been both of the projectiles. I didn't, I realized I didn't actually look at his armor. He might not have been fully armored. And if he was anything other than fully armored, then it only would have taken one. Firing jump jet. Alright, let's get in the water. Yeah, these these guys are not fully armored, okay. Uh, they also have a spider, for some reason. It's two, two assault mechs and two tiny tiny mechs. Weird design. Now the Orions also run... Oh no, I thought I, thought I remembered that the Orions ran center torso ammo. So he's got 49 health in his head section, which means this mech doesn't really benefit from shooting for the head. We could try to take a leg out, but honestly, I think we probably just core him. Engaging pocket. He does have bulwark up, so we're probably probably not going to be able to wipe him out this turn, I think, but we can at least get a start. Get moving in that general direction. You only get to fire one weapon? I don't think it's worth spending the resolve. It might not be worth firing the gun at all. I guess I'm I'm going down to zero heat, even with the laser fire, so we may as well. 
if it had hit the right location, it would have made our job slightly easier in the future. Uh, you don't really need to go next. Yeah, let's hold off on you. Interesting. A phoenix hawk walking into water to fire. Why? Just like, why, why do that? Uh, let's have the Orion go next. Can't quite make it to the water. We'll be able to next turn from here, though. Moving to position. Although, who knows if it'll matter. So, two chances to hit that. Didn't quite get there. We did hit his center again, though. Alright, I'll take that. We'll just core him. That's fine. If I was going to jump in, I need to make sure that I'm showing my left side to the Engaging enemy. Jump and do we even aim? I guess we should aim. Wow, really? Even with the water, I guess it's just too much jumping. Engaging. We probably didn't have to aim, but I wanted to be sure that this was going to work. Yeah, as sure as you can be. And then... I mean, the Infernos are going to do nothing at all here. With them having the advantage of being in the water and everything. So let's just precision strike this guy through the side. See if we can... His large laser's on the other hand, right? Yeah, that's a little unfortunate. If we shoot his leg out, he's just going to get up before we can really benefit from it, so... Wow. Really, just horrible work. Absolutely awful. Moving out. I think we probably turn off the Infernos for this. There's no point. Firing. This guy has that nice high heat threshold, too. He's a pilot who actually knows what he's doing. Imagine being in a spider and seeing all of these mechs and still jumping toward combat. There is something that is sort of the same shape as bravery that is happening there. Let's push this guy's initiative down. Yes, Commander. And then have the hard light, obviously, tear him to pieces. On my way. This cannot be it. This cannot be <clears throat> the end of the Dobrev thing, right? Hard to imagine. I guess we'll try. This is unlikely to yield a lot of damage. I, I'm thinking there's going to be one more mission after this. <clears throat> Affirmative. Got it. Oof. That guy had really bad luck. Oh, look at that. They're not even going to make me... Oh, no. They're still going to make me go over there and touch the base manually. They absolutely shouldn't, because there's nothing at this point that could stop me. But they are going to. Good to go. Got it. Everybody else, just brace out. Hold it. Right, Commander. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. You're quite persistent, Commander Corpsington. I don't remember what voice I was using for this guy. Like a bad rash, I just can't seem to get rid of you. Well, I could crack the obvious joke about that, but it's just too easy. What's coming for you is no laughing matter. I've hired a new kill team, Commander. They'll keep you company while my ground crew prepares the Dolbrev for departure. Oh, they're going to do more stuff right here? Oh, no, no. Get on it, take them out quick. This is... Right? This is going to be another mission? Yeah, Dobrev won't be going anywhere, getting a comm, mes a comm message. But wait, this can't be happening. It just can't. Okay, oversell it a little bit, why don't you, Samiri? The goddamned Black Widow. This is probably like a character that you know or care about if you are familiar with the Battletech lore, I'm assuming. Natasha the Black Widow Kerensky. Ah, she's got that last name. In mercenary circles, Natasha Kerensky is commonly considered the most dangerous mech warrior alive. Did I miss something? When did our search for the Dobrev turn into a meet and greet with Natasha effing Karen? This is terrible. This. There's no universe in which Sumeri Meyer says effing. Come on. 
Uh, you better put it through. This was, okay, this storyline stuff that the the characters want us to believe is very impressive, but aren't bothering to make like this. This reeks not of us being impressed, but of us being told that we should be impressed, right? And again, this is probably just mostly a problem a problem of me not knowing who this character is, so I care less than people who are familiar with the lore. But having having Sumeri, whose whole character is I am rough and tumble say effing kind of leeches all of the everything out of that a little bit uh plus melee hit gyros pretty bad piece of loot okay so there's some interesting stuff here there's some things worth taking i do like um 35 damage lasers those are pretty fun we could take this large laser we have so many large lasers that we aren't even using though we can get most of the way to a second enforcer. And then we're not going to finish a battle master, most likely. Uh, I mean, yeah, complete this Phoenix Hawk. And I guess the question is, do we want to force two pieces of battle master so that if we do run into another battle master, we can, in fact, finish it? And I guess so. And if we're going to do that at all, we should take all three pieces of it instead of getting closer to finishing an enforcer. Yeah, that's reasonable. We might still get the Enforcer pieces, because... Okay, we got one of them, because that's a lot of total loot. Alright, so I think we're about to have a dialogue sequence here with a character who everybody's going to fawn over, but who has not been shown to us to be anything at all. And then it looks like, yes, one more mission on this, uh, this step of the Flashpoint campaign. And maybe this is the end of it, and maybe it's not. It is wild how much loading there is in this game. You spend you spend a lot of time watching that little circle move. Just like even clicking around in the menus and stuff. Alright, send to storage, let's do the thing. Black Widow, I'm Darius Oliveira, XO of the Disciples of the Wheel. I couldn't the Disciples of the Wheel didn't fit. Tell us what you need, and I'll do my best to make it happen. I called to talk to the commander of... Yeah, okay, not a switchboard operator. Put Corpsington on the screen. You don't know who I am. He's down, Black Widow. I'm right here. You can literally see me. Good. I don't want this to take any longer than it has to. You've been shadowing the Dobrev, trailing it to, every, to its every port of call, having friendly chats with the Bounty Hunter, a man whom I've publicly marked for death. I bet a lot of people have marked him for death. He sucks. I mean, he isn't our friend. He's a grandstanding asshole who gave us a crate. But you received that crate and took it into your ship. You still have what you found inside. Also, it's super weird that, like, people, like, Sumeri in particular was amazed that, oh my god, what, how could we possibly be talking to Natasha Kerensky? If we're following a ship that left the galaxy, left the known galaxy with her father, it's like, this is exactly where she would show up. This is not weird at all. Uh, yes, I do, in fact, have crate. Uh, guilty as charged, what's it to you? I mean, we could ask this, but there are so many ways that she could know that thing. It's not really that surprising. The contents of that crate don't belong here, and neither does the ship that they came from. Dobrev has a history that you can't know, Corpsington. It shouldn't exist, and neither should its payload. That derelict is a problem, and I intend to solve it. Why are you telling us this? Because words are cheaper than bullets? That's not- bullets are literally free. But don't mis don't mistake my willingness to talk for uh, my willingness to talk for weakness, Corpsington. Every word from my mouth carries an ultimatum. That's a terrible line. You'll follow my instructions. If you don't, your company will die. Each one of those words has a different ultimatum in it, huh? That's just that's just bad. I mean, it might not be bad writing. It might be that this character is supposed to be kind of a kind of a boastful asshole who talks way above her intellect. Um, it's hard to know because we have no idea who she is. Uh, yeah, fine. Tell me what you want. Let's, let's get this over with. I want the Bounty Hunter's crate, along with anything else that came from the Derelict. And the machine intelligence you're babysitting, too. Dump everything at the Bauman Group's spaceport. I want it piled near the Dobrev when I arrive. Why? So you can slag it all in one go? That's right. I value efficiency. You heard my demands, Corpsington. Meet them, and you'll escape with your life. Do anything else, and you won't. The choice is yours. She doesn't value efficiency at the rate she's throwing ultimatums away? Come on. Okay. 
And then all of us stand around and say, oh my gosh, that was amazing. Okay, let's let's do the thing. Get me Knocker Bowman. Let's go. Let's go do the mission we all know we're going to do. <laughs> so Mary's finger re fingers rattle across her keyboard, and Knocker Bowman's face swims into focus on your view screen. Are you calling to gloat, Corpsington, or do you intend to demand a ransom for my ship? You won't get it. I already have reinforcements on the way. Yeah, we're uh, going to release the docking clamps, apparently. Run. I still have material in the spaceport. You will allow my crew to take it aboard the Dolbrev before it departs. Yo, anything that isn't on the, on the ship belongs to us now, Bowman. Don't try our patience. Take your goddamn ship and run. Bowman's engine, uh, image winks out as he severs his comm connection. Dude just hung up on us. Alright, two steps forward, two steps back. But at least we have a shot at scooping up whatever they left at the spaceport. Eh, we'll have to beat the Black Widow there to do it. She'll be as eager to destroy whatever contraband Bowman left behind as we are to acquire it. God help our mech warriors if they have to face off against the Black Widow. We have the biggest mechs that exist with the best weaponry that exists. Like, this is not... Okay. Sounds to me like we need a distraction. Something to peel the angry lady away from her lance. You think your drones would be up to it, Mama Bear? It sounded like the Widow had you on her hit list. She called you out specifically. If you took a swing at her, she'd probably sit up and take notice. She's... she... she uh, okay. She's a maximum sit up and take notice already, I, I imagine. Okay, that's... fine. I don't know what it is about the writing of this Flashpoint in particular that, that rubs me the wrong way, but it's just real bad. Like, I don't, I don't know that I think the writing in the game in general is awesome. Like, I play this game because I like the mechanics more than, more than anything else. I mean, I like the character stuff, the the conversations that you can have with the, the people on the ship off to the side and stuff. But I think that a lot of the a lot of the mission dialogue is less good. And and like I like I keep saying, especially it has a problem of this could be said in one line, and instead it's being said in six lines by four different people. Anyway, that's going to be it for us for today. Thank you all so much for watching. Come back next time when. We, I don't exactly know uh, what we're going to do in this Flashpoint, because we're not going after Black Widow, because we are so terrified of her. The drones are supposed to go after her, so we don't have to. I, yeah, I'm not exactly sure what the next mission. We'll see. We're going to do this next mission, and then we're hopefully going to fly off after the end of the Flashpoint immediately, because it would be cool if we could conclude this storyline. And we'll see you then.